one very important skill that we need when we leave this course is being able to look at computer output and read what's being given to us and analyze it. Handy skill to have and it also makes it so that I can ask you more questions on exams and such because you're not actually having to go create the confidence interval and all that stuff. So just a little hint to you on exams, I tend to give you a couple that you have to find yourself, but then I also love to give computer outputs that you have to analyze. Okay. So in 2009, JC conducted a Noel Lovett satisfac student satisfaction survey, excuse me, of a random sample of JC students. Students were asked if they were pursuing an associate's degree. That's something that we would like to know as a college because we get funding based off of the number of degrees we award, things like that. And if students aren't really interested in degrees, we need to know that so we can um, tell people that give us money from the state that, hey, no, hey, it's not fair to ask us to get degrees. A lot of people don't want them. They just want a class here or there, things like that. So I have down here the actual results. Um, this is a confidence interval from the results. And I've deleted some of the info. One of my favorite things to do on a test is delete some of the info and make you find what's left. So the first thing you want to ask is what, or wants to answer, excuse me, is what is the confidence interval? All right, well, the confidence interval is the actual numbers that make the interval, which is right here highlighted in green for you. That's your interval. So your interval would be the point six three um six three zero five four five five four to point seven one four four three six oh eight like this okay that's your confidence interval and I even highlighted it in green just like I would in class just to help you out okay so now compute the point estimate two different ways. Well, remember that your point estimate is the center of your interval, first of all, but it's also p hat. Let me rewind back to the formula one second. There we have. Point estimate is p hat, which is x over n, and that is the center of your interval. Okay, so I'm going to use both of those facts right here to find p hat. So p hat and if you'll notice, it wasn't given to you in the problem. It's your sample proportion. It's x over n, right? And that's 300 divided by 446, which is 0.6726. There. And just to make it clear, I wanted to show you this is p hat right here, the sample proportion. So if it would have been given to you in the problem, it would be right there in that blank spot. And then we'll learn this later, but this is the standard error of the p hat. We'll, we'll see that in another problem or two. Now how would we use the interval to come up with the same thing? Well remember that the point estimate is the center of the interval and I drew a lovely picture here that we're going to need a little bit later. So the center of the interval you can find by adding up the two edges and dividing by two. right? So we just need to take the two numbers on the edges which is 0.7144 and 0 0.630855 add them up and divide by two. All right, so let me see that. I'm going to take this, I'm going to add them up, and I'll get that. There, and just to clearly separate the two methods, over here on the left side is the formula part right here. I'll kind of give it like a gray so you can kind of see it. Right There's that one. And then over here is using the interval, where you take the two numbers that you're given, 0 0.6308554 and 0 0.7144360808, you add them up and you divide by 2. And you'll get 0 0.6726, which is the center, the point estimate in the middle. All right, now the other reason I drew this picture is because it helps us see the error. The error is half the width, right? The width is the whole pink region from 0.6309 to 0.7144. So I want half of that. So what I'll do is I'll take half the width of the interval. So you take 0 0.7144 and you subtract. That's the high number. And you subtract the low number, 0 0.6308554, and you divide that by 2. So let me just show you both of these real quick. So the first one I did was parentheses 0.6308554 plus 0.7144 close parentheses divide by 2. There was the 0.6726 and then the other one was take 
3608 minus 0 0.6308554. So subtract them and divide by 2. And that will be 0 0.04179. So 0 0.0418. And that would be your error. So one is the, the center is you add them and divide by 2. And then the margin of error is you subtract them and divide by 2. All right, now the standard error, if you recall, has a formula. We learned in section 8.2 that it's that big square root with the p hats. Right, so let me write it out. All right, so we learned in chapter 8.2, we learned that it was the big square root of p times 1 minus p over n. Well, the problem is we don't know what p is, so we have an approximation symbol here, and we're using p hat instead. So we have 0.626, 1 minus 0 0.6726, excuse me, and then divided by 446. So let me show you that. So I do square root 0.6726, parentheses, 1 minus 0.6726, close parentheses, divided by 446. And there you get 0 0.0222. And let me show you on an old calculator, because an older calculator doesn't quite work as nicely, the older 84s. Okay, so square root, and it's going to start you off here, and then you say, oh, this one actually is working just as nicely. That's because I have the new operating system, 6726 times 1 minus 0 0.67, oops, 6726, close parentheses, divided by 446, enter and you get 0 0.0222, just like I said you would. All right. But I prefer the color calculator, so I'm going back to it. All right, so I see 0 0.0222 is my standard error, and that is right here, standard error. It's also, the symbol for it could also be um, sigma with a little p hat next to it. This sigma with the p hat is kind of more old fashioned notation. Computers, however, don't write it very well. So um, in the last oh, decade or 20 years or so, it's, it's been moved more and more to SE for standard error. All right, now what was the confidence level? Well, that's actually kind of obvious. It's up at the top, it's 94%, right? That's your confidence level. Nope, 94%, sorry. And I'm going to highlight it in orange just to make it really obvious where you're looking at. Right, same as in the computer output up above. And now we want to find the critical Z value showing all the work. Well, let me remind you what those calculations look like. Let me scroll back a couple pages. So right here, this problem right here, we had the critical Z values for a 95% confidence. So we found the alpha, which was the area in both tails. Then we found the alpha over 2, which is the area in each tail. And then we used inverse norm to find the Z scores. That's exactly what you're going to do again, except it's not 95% this time, it's 94%. Okay, so I typed it up. The confidence level was 0.94. That means the alpha is 0.06. Now, let me, let me show you where that comes from. Alpha is the complement, so it's 1 minus 0.94, which is 0.06. Okay, that's the area in both tails. Okay, and then what you do is you cut it in half to get alpha over 2 because that's what it is in the formula, Z alpha over 2. So you have to take 0.06 and you divide it in 2, which gets you 0.03. That's the area in one tail, or in each tail, if you will. All right, then you want to find inverse norm to find these values. So you have a choice. You can actually do either 0.03 or 0.97. Let me show it to you. So I do distribution number three, and I say 0 0.03, 0 and 1 would be my, my mean and standard deviation. And I paste, it gives me negative 1.881. If you did it again, but instead of using 0 0.03, use 0 0.97, 0 and 1, you get positive 1.881. So where am I getting that from? Well, 0 0.03 is the area in the left tail. So if I find the one on the left, I use 0 
and then they're asking about the critical Z value. They're asking about one value. So they actually want the positive one. And the way to do that is either just make it positive or use 0.97 because the middle is 0.94 because that's your confidence level and this tail over here on the left is 0.03 and together they make 0.97. So whichever way you want to do it, but you're going to get 1.881. All right, we are all done with section 9.1. I'll see you back here for section 9.2.